John William Godward lived from August 9, 1861 to December 13, 1922. He was an English painter who started painting towards the end of the neoclassicist era. He was a protege of Sir Lawrence Alma Tadema, but his style of painting fell out of favor with the rise of modern art. Godward was a Victorian neoclassicist and therefore, in theory, a follower of Frederick Leighton. However, he is more closely allied, stylistically, to Sir Lawrence Alma Tadema, with whom he shared a penchant, in particular, static landscape features constructed from marble. Godward was born in 1861 and lived in Wilton Grove, Wimbledon. His parents were Sarah Averill and John Godward. He was the eldest son and had four siblings. He was named after his father John and grandfather William. The vast majority of Godward's extant images feature women in classical dress posed against landscape features, although there are some semi-nude and fully nude figures included in his oeuvre. A notable example of this is In the Tempidarium, completed in 1913. Its title was shared with a controversial Alma Tadema painting of the same subject that resides in the Lady Lever Art Gallery. The titles reflect Godward's source of inspiration, classical civilization, most notably that of ancient Rome. Once again, a subject that binds Godward closely to Alma Tadema artistically. Given that classical scholarship was more widespread among the potential audience for his paintings, meticulous research of detail was important in order to attain a standing as an artist in this genre. Alma Tadema was an archaeologist as well as a painter. He attended historical sites and collected artifacts he later used in his paintings. Also, Godward studied in detail both architecture and dress in order to ensure that his works bore the stamp of authenticity. In addition, Godward painstakingly and meticulously rendered other important features in his paintings, such as animal skins, wild flowers, and summer flowers. Neoclassicism was a Western cultural movement in the decorative and visual arts. Literature, theater, music, and architecture drew inspiration from the art and culture of classical antiquity. Neoclassicism originated in Rome largely thanks to the writings of Johann Joachim Winckelmann at the time of the rediscovery of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Its popularity spread all over Europe when a generation of European art students finished their grand tour and returned from Italy to their home countries with newly rediscovered Greco-Roman ideals. European neoclassicism in the visual arts began circa 1760 in opposition to the then-dominant Rococo style. Rococo architecture emphasizes grace, ornamentation, and asymmetry, whereas neoclassical architecture is based on the principles of simplicity and symmetry. The principles of neoclassical architecture were seen as virtues of the arts of Rome and ancient Greece, and were drawn from 16th century Renaissance classicism. Each neoclassicism selects some models among the range of possible classics that are available to it and ignores others. The neoclassical writers and speakers, patrons and collectors, artists and sculptors 
between 1765 to 1830 paid homage to a generation of Phidias, but their sculpture examples were more likely to be Roman copies of Hellenistic sculptures. They ignored both archaic Greek art and the works during the late antiquity. The Rococo art of ancient Palmyra came as a revelation through engravings in woods, the runes of Palmyra. Even Greece was all but unvisited, a rough backwater of the Ottoman Empire, dangerous to explore, so neoclassicist appreciation of Greek architecture was mediated through drawings and engravings, which subtly smoothed and regularized, corrected and restored the monuments of Greece, not always consciously. The empire style, a second phase of neoclassicism in architecture and the decorative arts, had its cultural center in Paris during the Napoleonic era. Especially in architecture, but also in other fields, neoclassicism remained a force long after the early 19th century. It had periodic waves of revivalism on into the 20th and even the 21st century, especially in the United States and Russia. The appearance of beautiful women in studied poses in so many of Godward's canvases has many newcomers to his works mistakenly categorize him as being pre-Raphaelite, particularly as his palette is often a vibrantly colorful one. The choice of subject matter, for example of ancient civilization versus Arthurian legend, is more properly that of the Victorian neoclassicist. Commonly shared opinion amongst the painter's numerous contemporaries was that Godward was considered a high Victorian dreamer. He was producing images of an idealized and romanticized world that in the case of both, Godward and Alma Tadema came to be criticized as having a world view of Victorians in togas. Godward quickly established a reputation for his paintings of young women in classical setting and his ability to convey with sensitivity and technical mastery the feel of contrasting textures, flesh, marble, fur, and fabrics. Godward's penchant for creating works of art set in the classical period probably came from the time period in which he was born. The last full-scale classical revival in Western painting bloomed in England in the 1860s and flourished there for the next three decades. He committed suicide at the age of 61 and is said to have written in his suicide note that the world is not big enough for both myself and a Picasso. His estranged family, who had disapproved of his becoming an artist, were ashamed of his suicide and burned his papers. Only one photograph of Godward is known to survive. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. Please give us a thumbs up. Those small gestures help us a great deal. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following video.